Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21 here, and this is a real quick tip. So, just in case you're wondering what the heck I'm doing here, I got all my batteries laid up. I'm just doing some battery charging. But, you know, I'm getting ready to do a video talking about some of my experiences from Run, run, to run DMV events and just things that you need to be looking out for for um, for uh, for when you start to use batteries for any kind of high performance and that's including speed run application. Okay. So one thing to keep in mind is the fact that all batteries are not created equal. So you see right here, I've got my Orion charger. And one of the interesting pieces of information that comes from the Orion charger here is the a measurement of the internal resistance of your battery. Now, if you notice here, I've got my SMC 3S LiPo right here, and it's nearly identical as some 3 s LiPo here, but you'll see this one is showing an internal resistance of 3.8 milliohms. That's for this guy right here. And you see I'm starting to keep track on the batteries of what the internal resistance is after every charge. But you look over here, this one, this has a resistance of 3.2 milliohms. So this is very interesting. The cells in this battery are actually less than half the resistance than the cells in that battery. So what does that mean? What, what difference does that mean? Well, the deal is there's a principle called Ohm's law, which basically says based upon a given voltage and current, actually based upon a given resistance and voltage, how much current will flow. The higher the resistance, so if you think about these batteries, basically they act like a resistor in line, okay? So they act like there's a resistor inside of the battery. That's why it's called internal resistance. So when you put two batteries running in series to get success, you're putting two resistors in series as well. So now we have two batteries. Like I said, this one right here is 3.2 milliohms. That's 3.2 thousandth of an ohm. And this right here is eight thousandth of an ohm. And if, oh, actually that's interesting. It just jumped. Now it says 16. Well, these things, these numbers change around a bit when it's actually charging. And that's another fact I'll talk about in a minute. But when you put the two resistors together, now that gives you an amount of voltage drop. So Ohm's law is V equals I times R. Voltage equals current times resistance. If you have a certain voltage and you have a set amount of resistance, then it will flow a certain amount of current. You can also flip that around and that will say that for a given resistance and a given amount of current, you'll get a, a certain amount of voltage drop. So that voltage drop or voltage sag during a run is a big limiting factor. So the lower your internal resistance is, the less your voltage drop or your voltage sag from your batteries, the higher your voltage will be, the more uh, RPMs you're able to get from your run. So in this case, I have two batteries that look like they're identical, but this one is 3.2 milliohms, and this one is measured at eight milliohms. So I put those guys together, that's gonna give me around 11 milliohms. I can use Ohm's law, and I can say that for, I know that you know, my ESC will give a maximum, because I'm using a Castle Mama Monster 2, or um, uh, well, I was using it last season. Now I've got a little upgrade, which I haven't told you guys yet. But I know that that, that particular ESC will burst up to about two, over 200 amps. So if I estimate 200 amps going through it, that will tell me what kind of voltage drops I was getting through the runs. And as you can see, that's pretty significant. Okay, so what that all boils down to is the lower your internal resistance is inside your batteries, the lower your voltage drop, the lower your voltage drop or voltage sag in the run, the more voltage you have available to actually turn into spin and, um, and get you RPMs during your run. So, very shortly you're gonna see I'm gonna be getting myself a set of low internal resistance batteries and I'm going to be testing them, baselining them against you know my Genzace, my SMC, uh, my SMCs and my Venom here so we can see, you know, what different brands, you know, what the internal resistance, you know, of these guys typically are and what that means in the real world. So, because it makes a surprising amount of difference. So, if you have aspirations for your 100 plus mile an hour vehicle, simple things like your batteries can, you know, that can make or break your run. 
and but also like I was saying here these are identical appearing batteries you know they're same series same everything but you have now they were bought about six months apart so the cells inside of them are probably they may even be from a different manufacturer I don't even know but you know just buying these model numbers you know they look like they're identical but they are not identical I mean, there's no way of knowing this performance difference unless you actually test so so in upcoming uh in upcoming videos i'm gonna be making a test rig so and show a method that anybody at home can use to test the internal resistance of your batteries but i'm just going to tease that a little bit and let you guys stew on it but don't worry it's coming all right so i hope you guys found this useful our house 21 signing out remember to like comment and subscribe and as i always say remember the mantra fly fix fly break it fix it and do it all over again and stay tuned a lot of interesting content coming up. 2016 is going to be a big year for the fleet. Peace.